Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. You have that raising from the dead power, the greatest display of God's power that has ever existed in the history of the world. That same power is in you. That is the gospel in one sentence right there. You've already got it. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm nearing the end of my fifth week of teaching on You've Already Got It. I've got a book by this title, study guides, CDs, DVDs, a lot of material, and I've already covered a lot of material. As I said, this is nearing the end of my fifth week of teaching, so I've already covered a lot of material. If you've missed any of this, please get these materials. Even if you've heard every program, it's still beneficial for you to get the material so that you can study it and uh, get it in depth so that you can share it with other people. And also, I can promise you, you will need to go back and remind yourself of these truths because this is not something you hear on a regular basis. There are very few people that preach about what Jesus has already done for us. They, most of it is about what Jesus can do, but not what He's already done. And I tell you, it's a huge difference. It's so much easier to release something that you believe God has already given you than it is to go get something that you don't have. I've been teaching this week out of the book of Colossians, and this is the mindset that Paul wrote this entire book from. And I'm, I haven't got time to go back through it, but man, it's powerful that you have already been equipped to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. You've already been delivered from the power of darkness. You've already been translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. You already have redemption. You already have been reconciled, that you now have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then the first few verses of chapter 2, he's praying that you would just understand what it means to have Christ in you, that you would acknowledge it, that you would understand it, that you would get assured, then you would get the full assurance, then you would get the riches of the full assurance to the acknowledgement of the understand, to the understanding of the acknowledgement of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And once you do that, it keeps you from being deceived. Satan can only deceive people who don't know what they have. If you fully understood what you have in Christ, Satan would not be able to deceive you and therefore gain entrance into your life and work his will. And so I quit yesterday in verse 7, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, where you're supposed to be rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein, talking about you abound in faith with thanksgiving. When you start thanking God for what he's already done, instead of, you know, pleading with God to do something new. It just makes your faith abound. You abound in faith with thanksgiving. Let me say it this way. If you aren't thanking God constantly for what He's already done, then you aren't abounding in faith. You may be fighting in faith. You may be struggling, but your faith hasn't reached its peak, its apex, until you start giving thanks. I could give you so many examples in my own personal life where I had a need, something I was believing God for, whether it was spiritual or physical, financial, whatever, and I'm in the process of believing and renewing my mind, but then I reach this place to where I believe I've got it. It is done, and from that time on, man, praise and thanksgiving just starts coming out, and every time that happens, I SEE THE MANIFESTATION, THE COMPLETION OF THE THING THAT I'M BELIEVING FOR. IF YOU AREN'T THANKING GOD, THEN YOUR FAITH HASN'T ABOUNDED YET. YOU HAVEN'T REACHED THE COMPLETION. IN VERSE 8, IT SAYS, BEWARE LEST ANY MAN SPOIL YOU THROUGH PHILOSOPHY AND VAIN DECEIT AFTER THE TRADITION OF MEN, AFTER THE RUDIMENTS OF THE WORLD, AND NOT AFTER CHRIST. REMEMBER THE CONTEXT OF THIS. HE SAID IN CHAPTER 2, VERSE 1, THAT HE HAD GREAT CONFLICT FOR THESE PEOPLE BECAUSE THEY DIDN'T HEAR THE GOSPEL DIRECTLY FROM PAUL. THEY GOT IT SECOND-HAND. HE WANTED TO MAKE SURE THAT THEY HAD THE uh, FULL GOSPEL, THAT THEY UNDERSTOOD COMPLETELY. THAT'S WHAT VERSE 2 IS ALL ABOUT. AND THEN HE SAYS THAT IN CHRIST, IF YOU UNDERSTAND THAT CHRIST IS IN YOU AND YOU'VE ALREADY GOT EVERYTHING, IT KEEPS YOU FROM BEING BEGUILED 
BY THE DEVIL. AND NOW HE'S SAYING IN VERSE 8, BEWARE. THAT WORD BEWARE IS A COMPOUND WORD, AND IT LITERALLY MEANS TO BE AT WAR, TO BE ON GUARD. YOU ARE IN A WAR. SATAN DOESN'T HAVE POWER TO FORCE YOU TO DO ANYTHING. HE DOESN'T HAVE THE POWER TO MAKE YOU SICK, TO MAKE YOU POOR, TO MAKE YOU DEFEATED, TO MAKE YOU DEPRESSED, TO MAKE YOU LONELY. HE DOESN'T HAVE THE POWER TO DO ANYTHING EXCEPT DECEPTION. SO IT SAYS, BE ON GUARD BECAUSE YOU ARE IN A WAR, AND LOOK, LEST ANY MAN SPOIL YOU THROUGH WHAT? THIS ISN'T THROUGH OVERPOWERING YOU, THROUGH SOME KIND OF, YOU KNOW, WEAPON, THROUGH uh, INTIMIDATION, ALL THE... NO, IT'S THROUGH PHILOSOPHY AND VAIN DECEIT AFTER THE TRADITION OF MEN, AFTER THE RUDIMENTS OF THE WORLD AND NOT AFTER CHRIST. SATAN DOESN'T HAVE POWER TO FORCE A SINGLE PERSON TO DO ANYTHING. HIS ONLY POWER IS DECEPTION. PHILOSOPHY. PHILOSOPHY IS A WAY OF THINKING. I'VE GOT AN ENTIRE SERIES ON THIS ENTITLED CHRISTIAN PHILOSOPHY, ABOUT SIX TEACHINGS TAKEN FROM THIS ONE VERSE. I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE TIME TO GO THROUGH ALL OF THAT, BUT YOU CAN GO TO OUR WEBSITE. YOU CAN FIND IT, AND YOU CAN GET THOSE MATERIALS. BUT it, it, SATAN DOESN'T OVERPOWER US. IT'S LIKE WHEN SATAN CAME AGAINST EVE. HE DIDN'T COME IN A MAMMOTH AND PUT HIS FOOT ON EVE'S HEAD AND SAY, YOU EAT OF THAT FRUIT OR I'LL SQUASH YOUR HEAD LIKE A MELON. HE DIDN'T COME IN A TIGER OR A LION AND WITH, YOU KNOW, TEETH BARED AND SAY, I'M GOING TO KILL YOU, I'M GOING TO RIP YOU IF YOU DON'T DO THIS. HE HAD NO POWER TO FORCE EVE TO DO ANYTHING. HE CAME THROUGH THE MOST SUBTLE ANIMAL, THE MOST SLY, THE MOST CUNNING, THE MOST DECEPTIVE ANIMAL THAT GOD HAD CREATED. WHY? BECAUSE HE HAD NO POWER TO FORCE HIM TO DO ANYTHING. HIS ONLY POWER WAS TO DECEIVE THEM, AND HE GOT THEM to, TO NOT UNDERSTAND WHAT THEY HAD, THINKING THAT THEY DIDN'T HAVE ENOUGH, THAT THEY NEEDED MORE. THIS IS HOW SATAN COMES AT YOU, MAKING YOU THINK THAT, OH, YOU'VE GOT TO HAVE THIS NEW MATE. YOU'VE GOT TO HAVE THIS NEW JOB. YOU'VE GOT TO HAVE THIS NEW HOUSE, THIS NEW CAR, THE NEW JEWELRY, THE NEW CLOTHES. YOU'VE GOT TO HAVE MORE. AND IT'S JUST LIKE TRYING TO FILL UP A BOWL THAT HAS A HOLE IN THE BOTTOM OF IT. YOU CAN'T EVER FILL ALL OF YOUR LUST AND ALL OF YOUR DESIRES. YOU'LL NEVER GET EVERYTHING IN THIS NATURAL REALM COMPLETELY PERFECT IN YOUR LIFE. YOU NEED TO FIND YOUR IDENTITY IN CHRIST, IN CHRIST IN YOU. THAT'S WHAT ALL OF THESE VERSES ARE SAYING. SO IT SAYS, BEWARE LEST ANY MAN, YOU COULD SAY THE DEVIL DECEIVES YOU, THROUGH NOT UNDERSTANDING WHAT YOU'VE GOT, THROUGH PHILOSOPHY, THROUGH WRONG THINKING, THROUGH VAIN DECEIT, AFTER THE TRADITION OF MEN, AFTER THE RUDIMENTS OF THE WORLD, AND NOT AFTER CHRIST. AGAIN, I'VE SAID THIS SO MANY TIMES IN THIS SERIES, BUT SATAN'S ONLY POWER IS DECEPTION, AND HE COMES AND DECEIVES YOU. AND IF YOU KNOW THE TRUTH, THEN DECEPTION HAS NO POWER. YOU KNOW, IF WE WERE IN A ROOM TOGETHER, IF YOU WERE HERE PHYSICALLY, LIKE, SAY, FOR INSTANCE, IMAGINE THAT WE WERE IN A CLASSROOM OR IN A CHURCH OR SOMETHING, AND I WAS PREACHING, AND I WAS HERE, AND I WAS PHYSICALLY WITH YOU, AND IF, IF I JUST GOT UP AND ALL OF A SUDDEN STOPPED AND CALLED YOUR NAME OUT AND SAID, WOULD YOU COME FORWARD? YOU KNOW, I JUST GOT INFORMATION THAT YOUR HUSBAND, YOUR WIFE, YOUR CHILD, SOMEBODY YOU LOVE HAS DIED. THEY DIED IN A CAR WRECK. AND I'M SORRY TO TELL YOU, BUT THEY'RE DEAD. DID YOU KNOW, IF YOU BELIEVED WHAT I SAID, EVEN IF THERE WAS NO TRUTH TO IT, IF I WAS JUST A BOLD-FACED LIE, BUT IF YOU BELIEVED WHAT I SAID, THEN YOU WOULD BEGIN TO START FEELING THE EMOTIONS THAT GO ALONG WITH LOSING SOMEBODY LIKE THAT. YOU WOULD EITHER FEEL GRIEF, SORROW, uh, LOSS, FEAR, YOU KNOW, ALL OF THESE DIFFERENT THINGS. BUT IF YOU KNEW THAT I WAS LYING TO YOU, SAY, FOR INSTANCE, YOUR HUSBAND OR WIFE, I'M SAYING THAT they're, THEY DIED IN A CAR AND IF THEY WERE THERE WITH YOU AND YOU COULD SEE THEM AND YOU KNEW THAT I WAS LYING, THEN INSTEAD OF HAVING GRIEF OR SORROW OR FEAR OR ANY OF THESE THINGS, YOU'D PROBABLY HAVE ANGER. LIKE, WHY WOULD YOU LIE TO ME? WHY WOULD YOU SAY SOMETHING LIKE THAT? SEE, IF YOU KNOW THE TRUTH, THEN THAT DECEPTION, THAT LIE HAS NO POWER ON YOU. YOU WOULDN'T HAVE TO SIT THERE AND SAY, I REBUKE THAT. I REFUSE TO BELIEVE THAT MY MATE IS DEAD. If you, IF YOU COULD SEE THEM, IF THEY WERE SITTING RIGHT THERE, IT WOULD HAVE NO POWER OVER YOU. THE ONLY REASON THAT A LIE HAS ANY POWER IN YOUR LIFE IS BECAUSE YOU DON'T KNOW THE TRUTH. THE MOMENT YOU KNOW THE TRUTH, JUST LIKE JESUS SAID IN JOHN CHAPTER 8, VERSE 32, YOU SHALL KNOW THE TRUTH, AND THE TRUTH SHALL MAKE YOU FREE. THE MOMENT YOU KNOW THAT WHAT IS BEING TOLD YOU IS A LIE, IT'S A TOTAL DECEPTION, THEN IT LOSES ANY POWER THAT IT HAS. 
AND IF WE UNDERSTOOD THAT CHRIST WAS IN US, AND IF WE HAD THE ACKNOWLEDGEMENT AND THE ASSURANCE, THE UNDERSTANDING, THE FULL ASSURANCE, UNDERSTANDING TO THE ACKNOWLEDGEMENT OF THIS MYSTERY, IF WE REALLY UNDERSTOOD WHAT IT MEANS TO HAVE CHRIST IN US AND ALL OF THE BENEFITS THAT COME WITH THAT, IT WOULD JUST TOTALLY DISARM THE DEVIL. YOU KNOW, WHEN I WAS YOUNGER IN THE LORD, AGAIN, I ACKNOWLEDGE THAT SATAN DOES EXIST. I ACKNOWLEDGE THAT DEMONS EXIST, THAT DEMONS TORMENT PEOPLE, THAT MANY SICKNESSES ARE DEMONS. I ACKNOWLEDGE ALL OF THOSE THINGS. SATAN IS REAL. BUT WHEN I WAS YOUNG IN MINISTRY, I GAVE SATAN MORE POWER THAN I BELIEVE HE WAS DUE. AND BECAUSE OF IT, I HAD DEMONIC MANIFESTATIONS. I HAD SATAN PHYSICALLY CHOKE ME WHEN THERE WAS NOBODY AROUND. I HAD... I WOKE UP FROM DREAMS AND I WOULD BE BLEEDING BECAUSE I WAS ATTACKED BY THE DEVIL. I HAD A LOT OF PHYSICAL THINGS HAPPEN, BUT AS I GREW IN THE LORD AND BEGAN TO UNDERSTAND THAT I ALREADY AM COMPLETE. I'M ALREADY, AS IT SAYS IN COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 1 AND IN VERSE 13, HE HAS ALREADY DELIVERED US FROM THE POWER OF DARKNESS. THE MORE I BEGIN TO UNDERSTAND MY AUTHORITY AND THAT SATAN WAS A DEFEATED FOE AND THAT ALL HE COULD DO WAS JUST DECEIVE ME AND LIE TO ME, THE LESS AND LESS CONTROL HE HAD IN MY LIFE. AND I'VE GOTTEN TO A PLACE... I USED TO GO INTO A HOTEL ROOM AND BIND ALL OF THE DEMONIC STUFF THAT WAS IN THERE, YOU KNOW, THAT HAD HAPPENED WHEN SOMEBODY ELSE WAS THERE. I USED TO GET INTO AN AIRPLANE AND PRAY AND BIND EVERYTHING AND BELIEVE THAT I'D BE PROTECTED AS I TRAVELED. AND I'M NOT SAYING THAT THOSE THINGS ARE 100% WRONG, BUT I'M SAYING NOW I DON'T DO THAT. I JUST WALK IN THE BLESSING OF THE LORD. AND I KNOW THAT SATAN... IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT'S GONE ON IN A HOTEL ROOM BEFORE I GET THERE. THE MOMENT I GET THERE, IT'S LIKE TURNING ON THE LIGHT. THE MOMENT YOU TURN ON THE LIGHT, THE DARKNESS FLEES. MAN, I HAVE GOD ON THE INSIDE OF ME, AND BECAUSE I KNOW WHO I AM, I'M NOT AFRAID OF WHAT, YOU KNOW, DEMONIC THINGS ARE OUT THERE. I USED TO BIND THE DEVIL AND PLEAD THE BLOOD, PUT IT OVER THE DOOR AND OVER THE WINDOWS THAT SATAN COULDN'T COME IN AT ME. AND, uh, YOU KNOW, NOW I DON'T DO THAT STUFF. THERE ARE DEMONS AROUND ME. THERE ARE DEMONS IN PEOPLE. I REMEMBER ONE TIME PRAYING FOR A PERSON WHO WAS DEMON-POSSESSED, AND I LAID MY HANDS ON HIM, AND I COULD TELL THAT THIS MAN WAS DEMON-POSSESSED. I COULD FEEL HIM SHAKING AND MOVING, BUT, YOU KNOW, I HAD MY EYES CLOSED. AND I I WAS JUST PRAYING AND REBUKING THE DEVIL. AND LATER, PEOPLE TOLD ME THAT HE REARED BACK AND HE WAS TRYING TO HIT ME AND HE WAS SWINGING, BUT HE JUST COULDN'T TOUCH ME. IT WAS LIKE THERE WAS A BARRIER BETWEEN HIM AND ME. AND I BELIEVE IT WAS GOD PROTECTING ME. AND I'VE JUST COME TO A PLACE WHERE, YES, I'M AWARE THAT SATAN EXISTS. YES, I'M AWARE THAT THINGS HAPPEN, BUT I NOW KNOW WHO I AM AND BECAUSE OF THAT, SATAN DOESN'T HAVE ANY POWER UNLESS I GIVE IT TO HIM. AND SO SATAN IS BASICALLY A NON-ISSUE WITH ME. I ACKNOWLEDGE THE EXIST, ESPECIALLY WHEN OTHER PEOPLE ARE GIVING HIM POWER, BUT HE DOESN'T HAVE POWER IN MY LIFE BECAUSE I AM NOT GLORIFYING HIM AND GIVING HIM THAT AUTHORITY. I TELL YOU, THAT NEEDS PROBABLY MORE EXPLANATION THAN WHAT I'VE JUST GIVEN IT, BUT THERE... THE LORD IS SPEAKING TO SOME PEOPLE DIRECTLY. THESE ARE THINGS THAT you, YOU ARE FEARFUL. YOU'RE CONSTANTLY BINDING AND LOOSING AND DOING ALL OF THIS. AND MAN, IF YOU WOULD JUST UNDERSTAND WHO YOU ARE AND GET FOCUSED ON THAT AND QUIT BELIEVING HIS LIES, IF YOU EVER UNDERSTOOD THE POWER, THE AUTHORITY THAT YOU HAD, IT WOULD JUST TOTALLY DISARM ALL OF SATAN'S LIES AND DECEPTIONS. JUST LIKE IF A PERSON HAD THEIR MATE SITTING NEXT TO HIM, AND YET I SAID, WELL, YOUR MATE HAS JUST DIED IN A CAR ACCIDENT. THAT WOULD HAVE NO POWER IF YOU KNEW IT WAS A LIE. IF YOU KNEW THAT SATAN WAS LYING TO YOU, YOU WOULD NOT BE TERRIFIED OF HIM. YOU WOULD... YOU WOULD TOTALLY CHANGE YOUR OPINION. YOU WOULD BEGIN TO START HAVING VICTORY THAT YOU'VE NEVER HAD BEFORE. MAN, THAT'S POWERFUL. ANYWAY, LIKE I SAID, I I HAVE PROBABLY SIX HOURS WORTH OF TEACHING ON COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 8. IN VERSE 9, IT SAYS, FOR IN HIM, TALKING ABOUT IN CHRIST, DWELLETH ALL THE FULLNESS OF THE GODHEAD BODILY. WHAT AN AWESOME STATEMENT. JESUS DIDN'T JUST HAVE A LITTLE BIT OF GOD. HE WASN'T A REPRESENTATIVE LIKE AN ANGEL THAT HAD DELEGATED POWER OR AUTHORITY. JESUS WAS GOD MANIFEST IN THE FLESH. YOU KNOW, 1 TIMOTHY, I BELIEVE IT'S CHAPTER 3, VERSE 16, SAYS THAT GREAT IS THE MYSTERY OF GODLINESS. 
GOD WAS MANIFEST IN THE FLESH, SEEN OF ANGELS, PREACHED IN THE WORLD, RECEIVED UP INTO GLORY AND ALL OF THESE DIFFERENT THINGS. AND IT SAYS GOD WAS MANIFEST IN THE FLESH. THE ONLY TIME GOD WAS MANIFEST IN THE FLESH WAS WHEN CHRIST WAS BORN. EMMANUEL, WHICH MEANS GOD WITH US. JESUS WAS GOD IN THE FLESH. HE DIDN'T HAVE JUST A LITTLE BIT OF GOD. HE WAS THE GLORY OF GOD, THE AWESOME POWER OF GOD. ALL OF THIS WAS IN JESUS. AND RIGHT HERE, THIS IS SAYING THAT IN HIM DWELLETH ALL THE FULLNESS OF THE GODHEAD BODILY. HE WAS 100% GOD. HE WAS IN A PHYSICAL BODY THAT WAS 100% PHYSICAL. IT WASN'T sin SINFUL PHYSICAL. IT HADN'T SINNED THE WAY THAT OUR BODIES HAD. BUT IT WAS PHYSICAL. IT WAS 100% PHYSICAL IN HIS BODY, BUT IN HIS SPIRIT, JESUS WAS 100% GOD. THE FULLNESS OF THE GODHEAD DWELT IN HIM BODILY. AND THEN LOOK AT VERSE 10, AND YOU ARE COMPLETE IN HIM. THERE ARE SO MANY SCRIPTURES THAT TALK ABOUT US BEING IN HIM. 2 CORINTHIANS 5, 17, IF ANY MAN BE IN CHRIST, HE IS A NEW CREATURE. OLD THINGS ARE PASSED AWAY. ALL THINGS ARE BECOME NEW. SO WE ARE IN HIM. HE IS IN US, AND WE ARE COMPLETE IN HIM. THE FULLNESS OF GOD IS IN JESUS, AND WE ARE IN JESUS. THEREFORE, THE FULLNESS OF GOD IS IN US. IF YOU COULD ACKNOWLEDGE THAT, IF YOU COULD UNDERSTAND THAT, IF YOU COULD GET ASSURED OF THAT AND THEN GET THE FULL ASSURANCE AND THEN THE RICHES, JUST PLUMB THE HEIGHT, THE DEPTH, THE LENGTH AND THE BREADTH AND UNDERSTAND WHAT IT MEANS TO HAVE GOD ALMIGHTY LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, I GUARANTEE YOU, it, THAT IS 99% OF THE BATTLE. AS IT SAYS IN PHILEMON CHAPTER 1, VERSE 6, PAUL WAS PRAYING A PRAYER FOR PHILEMON AND HE SAYS, I PRAY THAT THE COMMUNICATION OF YOUR FAITH BECOMES EFFECTUAL BY ACKNOWLEDGING THE GOOD THINGS THAT ARE IN YOU IN CHRIST JESUS. YOU KNOW HOW YOUR FAITH BEGINS TO WORK? IT BECOMES EFFECTUAL. IT'S WHEN YOU ACKNOWLEDGE WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE. WHEN YOU QUIT SAYING, OH, GOD, I KNOW THAT YOU CAN HEAL, BUT YOU HAVEN'T HEALED. WOULD YOU STRETCH FORTH YOUR HAND? WOULD YOU HEAL ME? THAT'S ALREADY GOT UNBELIEF IN IT. YOU ARE NOT ACKNOWLEDGING WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE. BUT WHEN YOU START SAYING, FATHER, I THANK YOU THAT CHRIST LIVES IN ME. I GOT THE FULLNESS OF THE GODHEAD BODILY LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF ME. I'VE GOT RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER, EPHESIANS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 19. IT'S NOT OUT THERE SOMEWHERE. IT'S ALREADY IN ME. I'VE GOT THIS. YOU'VE GOT IT. I'VE GOT IT. AND NOW I RELEASE IT. AND WHEN YOU START LIVING YOUR LIFE FROM THAT STANDPOINT, IT CHANGES EVERYTHING. IT MAKES THE FAITH OF GOD ABOUND ON THE INSIDE OF YOU AND YOU START SEEING DIFFERENT RESULTS. BUT THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN BELIEVES GOD CAN DO ANYTHING. HE HAS DONE NOTHING. WE'VE GOT TO BESEECH HIM. WE'VE GOT TO PRAY. WE'VE GOT TO BEG. WE'VE GOT TO GIVE. WE'VE GOT TO LIVE JUST RIGHT. BUT MAN, WHEN YOU START UNDERSTANDING THAT CHRIST IS ALREADY IN YOU, HOW CAN YOU NOT RECEIVE? YOU KNOW, IF YOU'VE GOT CANCER IN YOUR BODY, THAT IS IN THE PHYSICAL REALM. BUT IN YOUR SPIRITUAL BEING, INSIDE OF YOU, JUST... I KNOW THAT THE SPIRIT REALM AND THE PHYSICAL REALM AREN'T THE SAME THING. THEY'RE LIKE TWO DIFFERENT REALMS OF REALITY. BUT IF YOU COULD JUST THINK ABOUT THIS, INCHES AWAY FROM WHERE THAT CANCER IS, YOU'VE GOT GOD ALMIGHTY LIVING RIGHT THERE. ALL OF it, THE FULLNESS OF GOD IS IN JESUS, AND THAT FULLNESS IS NOW IN YOU. THAT RESURRECTION POWER THAT RAISED JESUS FROM THE DEAD AFTER HE HAD BEEN DEAD FOR THREE NIGHTS, THREE DAYS AND THREE NIGHTS, AND THEN HE ROSE FROM THE DEAD. THAT RESURRECTION POWER IS LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU INCHES AWAY FROM WHERE THAT CANCER IS. IF YOU COULD UNDERSTAND THAT AND REALLY BELIEVE THAT, GET ACKNOWLEDGE THAT THAT'S TRUE. THEN UNDERSTAND THAT. THEN GET THE ASSURANCE OF IT, THE FULL ASSURANCE WHERE ALL DOUBT IS REMOVED. AND IF YOU REALLY UNDERSTOOD THAT, I GUARANTEE YOU THAT, that POWER WOULD FLOW THROUGH YOUR SOUL, THE PART OF YOU THAT'S UNDERSTANDING AND ACKNOWLEDGING IT, AND INTO YOUR PHYSICAL BODY, AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU CANCER WOULD JUST BE GONE. ARTHRITIS WOULD BE GONE. MS WOULD BE GONE. Lou Gehrig's disease would be gone. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, it would be gone if you could get your mind fully established, if you could understand that you've already got it, 
If you could change the way you're praying to where, oh God, would you please heal me, to where you start saying, Father, thank you that 1 Peter 2, 24 reveals it by your stripes, I was healed. I've got the resurrection power of Jesus living on the inside of me. It's not out there someplace. It's in me. And you have given me the authority and the power to use it. You said, if I resist the devil, if I resist cancer, if I resist arthritis, it'll flee from me. And if you could get, acknowledge that, get the assurance of it, the full assurance, understanding, I, I guarantee you this life that's on the inside of you would begin to flow out. And some people say, well, how do I do that? Well, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of your tongue. I had a man come to me one time and he says, I know all of the things I believe I've got this power, but I just don't, I don't know how to use it. What do I do? And I told him, I said, you got power right there in your tongue. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. So start speaking death. Say, cancer, I curse every cancer cell in the name of Jesus. I refuse to allow you to live in my body. You start speaking it. And then you release life. Father, I release your anointing to purge every one of these dead cancer cells out of my body. Any damage that it's done to any part of my body, any, any organ, anything that it's eaten up, I release this life, death and life. I curse death. I curse sickness. I speak death to it. I speak life to my body. And you just start speaking. And, and if you really believe that with all of your heart, supernatural things will start happening. And I know that there's some people watching this program that you're thinking you're, you're crazy to think that words will overcome cancer. Man, I believe it. Jesus spoke to a fig tree. He never touched it. He didn't pour salt on it. He didn't chop the thing down. He says, no man will ever eat fruit of you again. And instantly, the roots of that tree died. Now, it took 24 hours. It was the next day before they could visibly see what had happened below the ground. But the moment he spoke, he didn't do anything except speak to it. It happened. And he said, I'm telling you how it works. If you will say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that the things that you say come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. Mark 11, 23. And then verse 24, whatsoever things you desire, believe that you receive them when you pray and you shall have them. It's, it's powerful. You've already got it but you have to believe it and everything is voice activated. You have to begin to start speaking this. I tell you, I've shared things that would transform your life. There's people that are healed today. You need to call our phone center. You need to let someone pray with you and just tell them that, you know what, I believe it. I believe I'm healed now and you will see results. Remember that I've got this book, not only in English, but in Spanish. I've got study guides. I've got DVDs and CDs that you can get. Our announcer is going to give you all of this information. And if you are one of those that your faith was quickened today, and if you spoke with me and agreed with me, please call that number and just tell someone. That could be your act of faith that would cement this thing and make it happen in your life. That's really important. So listen to our announcer. Please call or write today and then join me again tomorrow as I continue the gospel truth. You already got it. Allow me to uh, understand, to understand that I already, I already got healing. To see what my identity was in Christ was just um, life-changing. It was just totally life-changing for me. I didn't know that the power of God was already in me. So to me, there was a tremendous discovery. I didn't know how little I knew about the Bible, but thank the Lord for Andrew Womack that I already got it, honey. Andrew's complete teaching titled, You've Already Got It, is available in a book, CD, or DVD album, study guide, and also in a special package offer. Go to awmi.net or call our helpline at 719-635-1111 to see all the ways you can get this teaching. Today we want to stop our normal procedure and highlight Andrew's greatest gift to the world, and that's no exaggeration. This is like receiving a piece of his very heart and soul. The combination of all his Bible study and personal encounters with God for more than 50 years. It's all here. It's distilled together in personal notes and delivered to you in a software that we call the Living Commentary. 
Your Bible questions will be answered, your doubts addressed, and your mind renewed as you walk through the Bible with Andrew Womack as your guide. Nothing brings him more joy than having friends and partners like you grow into the fullness of the revelation of God's Word. And Andrew continues in the Word every day, and his latest discoveries continue to be updated in his software, making the commentary flow like a river of living water. Make this commentary your living connection to Andrew himself and see the Word of God come alive in you as you share his meditations on over 25,000 scriptures. And to make it available to as many people as possible, Andrew's priced this treasure at only $120. Go to awmi.net and download it today to start your journey to a deeper life in Christ with Andrew's Living Commentary. You can also order the Living Commentary by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I want to let you know that when you support Andrew Womack Ministries, that we also support a lot of other ministries. We actually started the Springs Rescue Mission that is now the largest distributor of food and clothing and furniture in all of Colorado Springs. We've got ministries to orphans. We've got ministry to children that have been caught in the sex trade. Uh, we support uh, pregnancy centers. They've actually lowered the abortion rate in Colorado to one of the lowest in the nation. And there's just a lot of things we do. So when you support here, you are helping us reach people all over the world. For over 20 years, Karis Bible College has been training and empowering students to know who they are in Christ and step into their God-given calling and purpose. Karis Worship specializes in guiding believers into the presence of God. Experience the transformative power of praise and worship with standing from Karis Worship. Standing will build you up and remind you of the power you have when you stand in God's love. Available as a CD, this album features 10 tracks that will keep your mind focused on God. Go to awmi.net to get your copy today. I want to let all of our TV viewers know that on the 24th of July, we are having what we call Karis Day live stream. And this is where I will be broadcasting to all of our locations around the world. We have well over 50 locations in many different countries, and I will be broadcasting and just talking to you about the benefits of signing up. You do have to register for this, and so if you'll go to karisday.com and register, then you can go and participate in this live stream on July the 24th. So check it out and join me for our Karis Day live stream. I would like to encourage you to check out our social media, all of these different platforms. We've got a lot of good news to share, so check it out, our social media for Andrew Womack Ministries.